Hello. Head movement. Fighters like Cody Garbrandt, Jorge Masvidal, Conor McGregor, Anderson Silva not only implement it effectively, but also draw in a large crowd for the Matrix bullet time flow they give off whilst dancing to the fists of their opponents. Sure, it is an effective tool in the world of unarmed combat because where a block occupies a limb, a clean slip pull or duck allows faster recovery to simply retaliate with more options. But like any move used too frequently, if your opponent knows your next move, they can exploit it and in this segment we're going to be looking at just that. Starting with perhaps the greatest welterweight of all time, George St. Pierre. One of the moves signature to George is his powerful stiff jab. He uses it like no other and as a result, naturally any fighter would prepare to deal with it. One of the ways to deal with a jab is to slip to the outside, which you see Matthews doing here. A slight slip to the outside followed with a lead hook to counter the jab. Overall, GSP has established pressure with his jab throughout the fight, thus Matt Hughes has come to respect movements from the left hand, especially if you consider how clean it landed after the feint here. Matt reacted to the feint, throws out his lead hook to counter GSP. GSP parries with his right and follows up with a stiff jab. Matt will be paying attention to that lead. GSP tries to feint the jab again, but this time into an overhand in the lance but he also gets punished for it. So now watch, GSP is thinking. He knows Matt will react to his lead hand. He feints it and Matt is stuck between slipping for a jab and protecting against a kick to the body. If you pair that with where GSP's eyes are looking, he's not looking at Matt's head. He's actually looking down. Thus, all of those elements combined, the kick lands clean right against Matt's slip. Looking at this again from another angle, GSP made the kick happen by establishing pressure and noting the reaction to his jab then exploiting the reaction which was head movement, successfully smashing the off switch. This next clip features Dan Hooker's vicious KO over Ross Pearson. Ross throughout this fight was slipping and transitioning to a punch exploding from that position, similar to what Mike Tyson was known for. But as Dan caught on to how Ross was ducking, bobbing and weaving, Dan's height advantage when he raised the knee exploited the pattern of behavior, straight up smashing the off switch. Finally, Gonzaga's KO over the legendary Mirko Krokop. Just notice how Mirko slips and moves to his left to avoid Gonzaga's overhand. Again, this is pretty textbook moving to the outside of a punch to make it harder for your opponent to follow up with the other hand. But if you catch a pattern of behavior, the same way GSP exploited Matt Hughes, you can exploit it. Gonzaga sends his right hand forward and instantly, Murko's reflexes react to it and by the time he realizes it's a head kick, it's too late. He slips, colliding straight into the shin. Gonzaga dropping a legend. This goes to show that there is no ultimate technique, especially in such a diverse world like the MMA arena. If you have a fixed pattern of movement, there will always be someone who sees it and figures out a way to exploit it. That's essentially the cornerstone or specialty of fighters like John Bones Jones. They figure out how you like to move, what makes you flinch, then they get you to do that whilst using a method they figured out to exploit it. And us being creatures of ritual and habit, there's always something. This is more than just martial arts, but a philosophy for life. This time, I'll let you think about this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. It's Kakarma, and until next time, peace.